Hello friends, welcome to another session of video tutorial on API testing using SOAP UI or Ready API. This is part 4 of this series. Uh, in today's session, we are going to take a look at assertions. Please subscribe, like, share and comment the videos on this channel. If you have any training inquiries, please contact me at uh, techtrainerraj at gmail.com. Okay. Today we are going to take a look at assertions and different types of assertions. Uh, we will be taking one positive test case with validations, uh, one negative test case with validations. So to begin with, what are assertions? Assertions are validations put in for a particular test script. So they are the conditions on which the test script will be decided whether it is pass or fail. Let us switch over to uh, ready API. Let us start off by creating a new project. Uh, for that, go to File, New Functional Test, and then click on API uh, Definition Start link, and provide the URL which I had given for the calculator web service which is provided by DNA Online. So this is the web service uh, WSDL link. So provide the visual link and then click on next. Okay, so I'm not going to have any of these assertions as of now because we are going to take a look at all these assertions. Okay, so click on next and I'm going to select multiple test cases. Click on select and click on finish. Okay, close this confirmation window. So now we have a project created. So what I'm going to do is uh, to simplify this, I'm going to delete all those SOAP 1.2 version test cases and I'm going to keep only 1.1 version test cases. So I'm going to delete 1.2 test cases. Okay. So by default it has created four test cases, one to add, the other one to divide, multiply and subtract. So these are the requests which it has created as well as the test case under project one, test suite one. Okay, so <clears throat> what we are going to do is, I'm going to click on uh, add request and provide the integer values here. For example, two and then four so I'm expecting a response from the web service as six. Okay, so this is the response which I get. Okay, so now I need to validate whether this response is correct or not. So the test case will be, okay, the positive test case is check if get a valid response okay check if the six when input numbers are Check the status code. 
okay check or not okay so these are some of the validations which i'm going to uh, look at uh, before that i'm going to go back to this project and look at assertions so there is an assertion button here so you can add an assertion to this particular request either you can go to add assertion or click on this assertion here okay so now by default it is going to create an assertion which is of type soap response okay which is this response let me delete this and recreate them again for this particular request I don't have any assertions added so I can click plus link to select an assertion from the list of assertions available so there are different types of assertions available one is property content compliance status and standards and you can provide the script the other one is SLA so there is JMS response there is JDBC assertions and there is a security assertion so we will take a look at some of these uh, to begin with I'm going to take a look at property content first I'm going to use this contains to check from the response what contains says is contains searches for the existence of a string token in the property value it supports a regular expression applicable to any property okay so I'm going to select that click on add okay so here I need to check for the value 6 so I'm going to say 6 okay click on ok so now this is a contains check or assertion which is put in to see whether the response contains value 6 or not so as we can see this is green that means it, it, it is having that particular value in the response so let me change it to 7 and see what happens okay so now as soon as I change it to 7 the contain fails okay so this is one type of assertion wherein we can check the value okay so if it is a string for example instead of 6 I'm going to provide the entire tag okay. and result so this is the one which I'm interested in now 6 and closing tag and the result okay I'm going to check for the entire string now so I can click on ok now there is one assertion which is looking for this value here yeah, add result along with the tag the the result value okay it's going to check for this particular um, content and if it contains the response contains this value then it is going to pass okay so again there are two options ignore case and regular expression so instead of this what I can do is I can add result okay uh, in smaller case and result have t here so i'm going to have it as i'm going to click on ignore case so this is going to ignore the case of this particular of value okay i'm going to click on ok so it still passes so that means it was able to find out this particular value in the response okay so 
another way of doing it is I can also use regular expressions here okay so I click on regular expression I'm going to modify this by putting DTR dot star that means tag starting with add and then ending with anything else which is star and then I'm going to have one value which is dot question mark and then I'm going to have dot star anything starting with and contains ends with the result okay so since I have ignore case as well as use token so this is same as our earlier example I'm going to click on ok okay it's still passes okay so this is how you can use a regular expression for the contains assertion okay so let us see what happens so I'm going to have only one value here so what I will do is I will change this to 10 for example now in the result I will be having two digits so we are checking only for one digit in the the contains so let us see what happens click on send okay so now as you can see this failed because I am checking only for one digit here question mark checks for one digit only so if I change it to star it should pass okay as you can see it has passed okay so this is how you use the contain assertion okay now I'm going to delete this let us take a look at other assertion okay I'm going to check for equals so what this says is checks that the property value equals to some other value okay what I will do is sometimes it is also necessary that you know you need to check the exact response so at the time we use equals okay for example what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this entire XML content from the response and I'm going to add this equals okay click on add the target text I'm going to have it as the entire content of my response okay so here also I can you make use of ignore case in comparison so what happens is okay so this will also pass because the response whatever we got matches with this response currently whatever we have so if I change this back to 14 for example then this should fail because the value is different it's going to be different okay see the value is 24 and it is looking for value 14 in the response okay this is how you use equals assertion well, let me take this one out okay so let us take a look at some other assertion under property content Okay, here I can also have message content assertion. Okay, so let us click on this add. Okay, it opens up this message content assertion. Use checkboxes to set which nodes to include in the assertion and expected value. So here, you, since I have only one result here, so I have only one checkbox. So if you have multiple results, so you'll be having multiple checkboxes. From each of the checkboxes, you can select what is the expected value and what is the actual value in my case the result is 24 from the response so I'm going to add this okay and equals to if it is equals to 24 or I can say you know less than 24 this assertion should should be successful or I can set it to greater than or equal to so that means 
whenever the value the actual value which is so it's going to compare expected value and the actual value if the expected value is greater than or equal to 24 then this will pass this asset will pass so I'm going to save this okay so what I will do is I'm going to change this value to 15 okay I'm going to click on send okay now as soon as you, um, I hit send I see this assertion has failed so that means here it is checking for value 24 greater than or equal to 29 so here whatever we are checking is expected value is 24 greater than or equal to 29 which is not the the value okay, if I change it to less than or equal to they should still work so this that means the expected value is still less than the actual value okay so this is how you can use the message content assertion okay i'm going to delete this and then i'm going to add another one which is not contains okay click on add so if it doesn't contain for example 29 or 30 then this is a pass so here the result contains 29 so it is going to check for 30 since it is not containing that 30 so it's going to pass so as soon as i change this to 15 so that means this assertion will become true and then this this fails remember that this is not contains okay so this is negation of whatever the value which we provided okay so we'll cancel <coughs> delete this assertion go back uh, to property content again okay so this is one of the important assertion which we will be using most of the time um, hex path match okay click on add okay so for this we have to see the xml response okay uh, for this to work we have to add the namespace first okay click on namespace so this will add the namespace from here you can select the node which node you want to validate okay so this is the node i'm going to validate okay which is ns1 which is namespace one which is temp uri dot org if you look at this okay which is temp uri dot org and add response of one which is add response of one okay and add result of one so this is the add response tag within that i have add result tag and the value expected value is 30 okay so this assertion will also pass suppose if i change this so this will become this assertion should fail because the matching value is 30 but the expected value is 31 okay so this is one way of adding this xpath expression and the other way is you can also go to outline click on select the 
the value and then right click on this add assertion okay so there are few things here you can add assertion for the content or for the count for existence okay so and also for content matching regex so you can also use a regular expression here and you can also write a script for its existence so let us see first add for content okay so this is checking for the text value 31 okay click on save so this has passed but this assertion is looking at value 30 but this assertion is looking for value 31 so that is why one failed the other one passed so if i select add assertion count it is going to check for the number of counts that add result tag is appearing in that add response so currently under add response we have only one add result tag okay so that is why the selected value is one so if i say two then this should fail okay so it has failed the same way you can also add assertion for existence under add response i should be having at least one add result so that means under add response it is going to go and look for add result tag so if it exists that means it is true then this assertion will, will pass so currently we have one add result so this if i save it this should pass this is how we can make use of assertions from here also under outline i'm going to delete all of these okay we have covered property content and then we look at compliance status and standard okay so under compliance status and standard okay let us look at http header equals so what this does is it compares the value of an http header in the response against the expected value okay so what is http header in our case so let us go and look at a raw so this is my http header okay so it is going to validate one of these so let us go to compliance header equals to click on add so i'm going to have cache control here or content type okay before that i'm going to copy this entire thing and paste it into a notepad okay so and then add this session go to compliance status and standards click on http header equals click on add the header is uh, the one which we copied just now the one which i'm looking at is content type okay and what is the value which i'm looking at the value which i'm looking at is text xml up to this okay click on ok as you can see the header contains this value so if i change this to f9 okay so this is going to fail so we can also check the header contents and its value through this http header equals assertion you can also use ignore case and regular expression for the value okay
so this is how we can use HTTP header equals okay, let me delete this let us go back and see what else we have okay HTTP header exists okay so here I'm going to check again the same header uh, which is okay this time I'm going to check whether date exists in the response or not that means HTTP header of that particular response or not okay so now you can see it exists so this is true okay to delete this I'm going to check okay so this is one of the important thing wherein you can check invalid HTTP status codes checks that the target test step received an HTTP result with the status code not in the list of defined codes so we, from the result we can see that the response code whatever we got is 200 so I'm going to use this HTTP sorry invalid HTTP status code okay invalid is generally 400 500 okay so I can provide multiple codes here but uh, to check this I'm going to provide 200 also so I'm going to just say that 200 is not okay status code for me for the for this particular test case okay. just to see whether this works or not okay you can see that this has failed because it's looking for invalid HTTP code okay which contains 200 okay I'm going to say only 400 and 500 so this will pass okay okay I'm going to remove this again I'm going to go back to okay so not soap fault so validates that the last received message is not a soap fault applicable to soap test steps okay so what is soap fault whenever there is an exception we get soap fault so since we haven't got any exception here if I say not so fault, it should pass. Okay, so I added this. There's no so fault. Suppose say if I give value as a for integer a and integer b value, I'm going to keep it intact. I'm going to click on send. Now I should be getting a so fault. Okay, so now I got soap fault here, so that is why this failed. Okay, this assertion looks for not soap fault. So since we got soap fault, this has failed. Okay, the same way I can also look at the other assertion which is so fault okay, if I get a so fault it will pass okay so if I don't get a so fault for example I'm going to change this back to 15 click on send okay so now this will fail so this will this is actually opposite of not so fault okay so you have to be very sure which assertion you are using and then how it affects actual validation of a test case okay, I'm going to click on this delete this okay, so let us look at SOAP response it validates that the last received response is a valid SOAP response or not okay so here SOAP response is 
I'm going to click on this. Since this is a valid SOAP response which we got, so this assertion, this validates to true, which is pass in our case. Suppose if I go back and edit this as A, and then click on send, okay. Now still, this is a valid response. Even though there is a SOAP fault, it is still a valid SOAP response. Okay, so if this XML file is malformed with, for example, let us say SOAP, uh, instead of envelope, we have something else. Okay, that becomes an invalid SOAP response. Okay, for example, if it doesn't contain SOAP body at all. So that becomes invalid SOAP response. Okay, for every test case, you must check this, whether you have valid SOAP response or not. Okay, that is why it adds by default. What is the difference between a valid SOAP response and a SOAP fault? SOAP fault will check only for this particular tag, whether it, the response contains a SOAP fault tag or not. And SOAP response will validate the entire XML message, whether it contains a SOAP envelope, whether it contains SOAP body, inside the SOAP body we have a valid response or not. Okay, so let us delete this and look at the other one. Click on this, compliance status and standards. So the other one is valid HTTP status code. Okay, so this is also one of the important things wherein we need to add the codes which we think are valid. So in my case, 200 is valid. Okay, so for positive test case, 200 is valid. I'm going to have okay here. Okay, since this is uh, not a valid response it failed so i'm going to go back and add 15 here click on send so now the session is valid so i got 200 as response okay let us delete this okay let us look at the other assertion okay so let us good SLA. SLA is also one of the important assertions to have wherein you check how soon you get the response from the web service. Okay. So generally it should be in milliseconds. Okay. So this is to check the performance of your web, web service. Okay. I'm going to add response. Uh, SLA assertion so I'm going to specify it as 200 okay so this failed because the actual response whatever we got was 547 seconds but inside this assertion we said we, we are worse we were supposed to get the response within 200 milliseconds so if I change this to 600 then this should pass Okay, as you can see, this has passed. Okay, so let me delete this. The script way we will be covering in the later videos. Uh, so we will be using Groovy script for that. Okay, for security, uh, we will have sensitive information exposure. So let us click on add. So these are predefined tokens along with their descriptions. So by default, uh, the response will go through these tokens and if it finds any of these tokens, then it will assert. Okay. okay, so these are some of the assertions which we have seen. So let us go back to our test case. Close this. Okay, we'll go back to our test case the positive test case uh, with validations. So here I'm going to check if we get a valid response. Okay, so 
now so we have a valid value here so we are going to get click on send I'm going to delete all the assertions whatever I had I'm going to add the first assertion which is check if we get a valid response this is this should be the first thing you should be checking okay click on this again lines so response so response add okay so we have used soap response here which is a valid response in our case so we have covered this okay covered check if the result is six okay so in my case now uh, the current value which i am using is 15 and 16 so i should be checking for 31 okay so i should be checking for 31 instead of 6 i should be checking for 31 and the input values are 15 and 16 okay for this i'm going to use property content assertion Okay, I, I could have used contains but I'm going to use XPath match because this is the one which we will be using most of the time so in this okay before this let me explain this so this is our XML response inside this it is using namespace which is http colon slash slash temp uri dot org okay so what i'm going to do is xpath match i'm going to add the namespace first okay since we have two namespaces, one is SOAP, the other one is XML namespace. In our case, it is called NS1, which is tempuri.org. Okay. So now, here I can also type in, since I know NS1 is the namespace which I'm going to use. So ns1 slash add response. Okay, double slash. We start off with double slash ns1 colon add result. Okay, and the value which I'm expecting is 31. Click on save. Okay, so this session is also passed. So let me see, let me see whether this is working or not. So 32. If this is not the value which I'm looking for. So that means my X path is working here. I can provide this here. So if you know how to provide X path, you can provide it here. Else you can always go back to select node. Okay, and select this and then put the value here okay so in this case it is going to look for ns1 add response which is add response here and then ns1 add result so this is add result of one so since there is only one add response and then there is only one add result and the value is 31 okay so click on save okay the other one is using x path we have matched it x path session okay check the status code so this is this should be one of the important things to check to check this so i'm going to add another session okay now compliance Okay, 
delete HTTP status code. So I'm going to add. So since I know that this is 200, so I'm going to add this. This is using valid HTTP status code. Okay, so here I'm going to check for certain element is present or not. So what I will do is um, for this I'm going to use equals. So I'm going to check for the entire content of this XML response. Okay, so I'm going to check, go and copy this and I'm going to add a new assertion here property content equals I'm going to add result here I'm going to check for this and click on okay. okay so for this particular request I have added four different assertions so this test case will only pass when all these validations are done for this particular request. So this is how you add assertions. So you can also add a number of assertions here. And you will click on send. Okay. So now you can see that this test case passed with all assertions. Let me see if I put in A, then click on send. Okay, so it is a valid SOAP response. Okay, the XPath value didn't match, and then it is not a valid status code, and then the response, whatever I got, it doesn't have the same XML content. Okay, so this is how you can validate a particular test case. Okay, so this is about positive test case. Okay, so let us look at negative test case now. Okay, let me take the divide example here. So I'm going to provide 5 and if I provide int b because 5 will be divided by 0. So this should give me a soap fault which is an exception so I should be getting an exception here fault string but this is a valid test case even though it is a negative test case this is a valid response whatever I am getting okay so for this I am going to add assertions now negative test case divide by zero okay first thing is check if we get a valid response okay check if we get a soap fault check the the content that is valid exception okay and also we should be checking for status quo okay so we'll be checking all these values here okay so for the first thing is by default it has added whether it is a valid soap response or not now this is a valid SOAP response so we will add the other three okay so this is added right okay so we're going to check whether we got the SOAP fault or not for that I'm going to add another assertion compliance status and standard here I'm going to check for support 
So if I get a so fault with this particular test case, then this is this test case is passed. So I have added a so fault now. So for this, I have added so fault. Okay, so now we need to check the exception. Okay, so okay, so in this case, I'm going to check for fault stream. Okay, I'm going to copy this the entire stream from here to here. And then I'm going to use property content contains. Click on add. Okay, and then ignore. Click on OK. So now, since this contains the response contains this value, so it is a pass. Okay, so this is the third validation which we put in. The fourth validation would be so this is contains which I used and for checking the status code okay what is the status code it is 500 here so I'm going to add another assertion here and here I'm going to add compliance so again this is a valid status code for this negative test case which is 500 in this case Okay, so I'm going to add this. So this is a pass. Okay, the final thing, uh, whatever I'm going to look for is the response time. Okay, I'm going to add another assertion whether it meets SLA or not. Okay, I'm going to put in 200, but I got 275. So I'm going to expect the next response within 300 millisecond. So all of them pass. Okay, so this is about assertions and how we can add different assertions to requests in our case. That is the end of today's session about assertion. Thanks for watching. Please stand by for more videos on this channel.